if not, we can um, we can get started, and um, I'll go ahead and read it off. Okay, so I will go ahead and get started on the um, on the actual call itself. And if someone's able to get around the sharing it, that's fantastic. If not, uh, also posting the, the link would be uh, here would be good. So we have uh, three recurring meetings. Uh, we have the NSM document meeting, which looks like it's been switched uh, monthly. Do do we have um, do we have anyone from that particular call? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I'll reach out to Ramki and uh, and Prem to see what they. Um, sorry, not Ramki and Prem. I'll reach out to to Jeffrey to see if he's up to uh, to running this at this particular time. Like maybe we could switch the time around to a to a time that's more accommodating. But uh, right now, I think he's actually on a on a vacation. So um, we'll work out when we want to run that. Uh, same with the uh, use case call. So I'll reach out to Prem and, uh, and Ramki about it. We have the CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every first and third Monday. We just had a call yesterday. And there is a CNCF Networking Working Group, which occurs every two weeks on Tuesday at 9 a.m. So major events that are coming up, we have ONS um, in Europe and one more thing here Fred. Sure. Muted. Yeah. Sorry, sorry Fred, we probably should update our minutes. So we have uh, the um, this morning at this European morning uh, we had the um, work group called the uh, NSM work group call which is in the Asia friendly time zone. Uh, okay, time. Um, so um, I don't know, maybe we should just start it here also in the recurring, but the minutes are updated there just below this new one. So I might give an update later, sorry. Cool, yeah, and um, add, a, add it to the agenda uh, as well, just so we can talk a little more about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have um, three major events going on. We have ONS Summit in Europe. We have uh, four talks accepted, a, uh, a TUG meetup that's going on, Telecom User Group. And we have the CNF testbed tutorial, which will, which will be going on. And so a lot of activity. We have the Open Source Summit in Lyon with a, uh, with a talk accepted there by Ivana and Radoslav. And we have KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. We're still waiting to see what the results for the talks are on that. Um, but it's a huge announcement. We have a NSM conference, uh, co-located conference, uh, NSMCon, which has been announced. And the call for papers is open. So you have, so we'll have a full day of uh, NSM-related things. So um, definitely... Mark your calendars. The entry for it is fifty dollars, and those uh, fifty dollars will be donated to the uh, to the CNCF uh, Diversity Scholarship Fund. So, uh, the fifty dollars is primarily to prevent people from signing up for a free event and taking up slots, and preventing people who really want to come from from joining it. So. Um, the call for paper is, uh, there's a form there, so, or a call for proposals, there's a form there, so uh, it, uh, go ahead and think about what you want to talk about and feel free to submit it in, to share it with all your friends. Um, with that, we have the Network Service Mesh uh, Twitter account. Uh, Lucina, are you on? I think she's not. Oh, cool. So, 
Yeah, so she uh, she announced it on Twitter, the uh, NSM Con as well. So uh, that's an easy place to to find it. And with that, uh, do you want to talk about uh, the 1 a.m. Pacific time meeting that, uh, that you've been running? So shall we just call it the morning call? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, so today we had uh, our first uh, call. Uh, we should have an official name for it. But let's say that it's the uh, biweekly morning call. Uh, it's your, your European morning, uh, 10 a.m. Central European time. Um, I think it's on the calendar already. Uh, it, it will update probably some links here and there. Uh, we had quite good presence, I think uh, about uh, 10 people. Um, so uh, it's a 30 minute one. Uh, it was mostly about, you know, introducing the project uh, and talking about the status. Uh, we had a number of questions from uh, some of the participants. And uh, the intent is that in the following one, which will be in two weeks, uh, we'll give uh, like um, the purpose of this call is to mostly allow people to ask questions. Uh, give suggestions uh, like uh, what would be uh, what would make sense uh, and things like that so on this call it was mostly me talking about uh, where we are what we do the purpose of the call etc but on the next uh, calls uh, it will be mostly the floor would be for the people that attend uh, and um, that's about it i think uh, i mean I'm excited that we started it. We had good participation. I hope that it will grow even more. Yeah, I think it'll definitely grow. The um, uh, the key to it is being consistent. Yeah. And so there's that we definitely know there's people interested in uh, in that region. So as they find out about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm confident people will start to show up, and uh, we'll we'll grow ourselves a uh, a uh, friendly uh, Asian community. Yeah. Um, point. Yeah, I'll, I'll see about on occasions dropping by as well. Like uh, <laughs> at first, the I think the initial proposed time was something like. 3 a.m. my time or, or around that time, but 1 a.m. Uh, from 1 to 2 a.m. I, I can occasionally do that. I'm sometimes up at that time. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, I, for, I, for, I forgot to mention on the NSM con, um, we are uh, we are also listed on the KubeCon co-located events uh, webpage. So if you go, if you if you see the KubeCon 2019 uh, program, um, in the they have all the co-located events. We're we're listed there as well. Uh, so you can point people there, and you can also point them to our website, the Network Service Mesh website, and we have it listed under events. And so we'll put some verbiage on the front webpage soon. So that is a uh, to-do item that uh, that we have at this point. So, and we'll we'll share more information as uh, as time goes on. Um, and see, the one last thing we need is the call for papers itself has a uh, has a uh, deadline for uh, for the proposals to be submitted. So that deadline is September thirteenth, and the schedule will be posted on September twenty seventh. So we'll go. We'll, we'll add that to the uh, to the events page as well. Uh, and so, since we don't have anything else this on the agenda, there there is something that I wanted to to talk about uh, a little bit. So, <clears throat> and uh, Nikolai, I, you'll have a lot more information than I will at this point. Uh, so we were having a bit of flakiness on the uh, on the bills, and uh, and with running the NSEs. Do you are, do you have any information on that in terms of like what's going on or what's happened? Yeah. So. Uh... Apparently, on uh, Monday, a new set of uh, Kubernetes uh, releases 
were announced and because we are essentially using just the latest upstream version um, of our builds, uh, I believe, were updated. Uh, the point of 115.2 was to fix two CVs. Uh, one of the CVs is uh, regarding uh, an, um, an authorized access to custom resource definitions from one namespace to another. Uh, we, asked, we actually have a, an issue about it. Uh, we tried some fixes. Uh, we're still uh, trying to figure out and to convince uh, CI to pass all the tests. Um, but the, essentially the fix is, uh, the, the problem for, for on our side is that um, our custom resource definitions, you know, the network service endpoints, network service managers, and the network services themselves, they are all scoped to a cluster level and we are accessing them uh, with a namespace in the request, like when we want to access, uh, for example, the list of uh, network services, we are sending also the namespace and this fix specifically prevents this, this case. So if there is a, a mismatch between whatever you send in the, as a namespace in the request, and the scope of the CRD, then you get error. Um, so this is essentially fixing a security problem and uh, we are more or less exploiting it uh, unintentionally. <laughs> That's uh, what it is uh, today. <clears throat> well, so it sounds like the potential fix is just removing the, uh, the namespace so that we access the cluster level instead. Uh, what we discussed in the main channel was essentially that um, it probably is a better idea to keep this and just make the CRDs namespaced. So this will eventually allow in the future to be able to run to network service managers uh, in parallel. I know that this is maybe a little bit debatable. Uh, and probably needs a little bit more thinking. Uh, it's essentially just deciding on one or the other, either. I mean, it's uh, just deleting some code or changing names, not nothing really special in terms of programming algorithms and whatever. Um, I think that that kind of restricting ourselves to um, to have only a single cluster wire with uh, NSM is probably, I mean, like if we can avoid it, it probably will pay, pay off some, some, some time in the future when we get more advanced features of, you know, inter cluster uh, and whatever <laughs> features. Mm -hmm. In the short, in the short term, if it doesn't, if we don't fix it, uh, soon, do you think it'd be possible to pin to uh, 15.1? And the only reason I, I ask is that we have some some people who are looking at it for the for the first time. Who may yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So that's, I know. That's, that's, that's the reason I asked. I I also I also got some people. Uh, I also have some people that that got to me today and said, "Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> NSM and it's doing this," and I'm. Uh, <laughs> you chose that the, the, the wrong day. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, pinning in terms of what, uh, like uh, having this in, in in our main line. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can do that if that's 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 the, the only way forward. Uh, just to make master green and uh, people to to test it, then we we can revert it once this this other thing comes in place. That's yeah, and and we can and we can remove that on the on the uh, branch we're fixing. So like the the actual branch of fixes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, so that that way we just unblock people who are who are trying it for the first time since we don't have a uh, um, since we don't have a stable branch uh, or something we can call the mm -hmm. mimic branch at this time. Cool. Yeah. Also, uh, it's cool. Uh, give us probably we need to create different uh, at least one sanity test per different version to, of Kubernetes and put it into our continuous integration system. So 
Just check all yeah. the possible versions. Check master, <laughs> check released versions. It should be pretty easy in current infrastructure. And I think mm. it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, do you think like nightly build or like weekly build or I don't know? <laughs> what do you think? Because if you want to add this in all our testing, then I don't know. I mean, we are already at one hour of a full CI. Uh, but it will depending. go in parallel with the current, mm -hmm. just creating one cluster on packet uh, with different versions probably could help to detect uh, these kind of errors. Yeah. Because if we have a fixed version, we don't know about uh, the master uh, could not work with the latest version of Kubernetes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the CI clearly yeah. is okay. is working because like because we have on the latest Kubernetes, we we uh, we found it. So it definitely it definitely helped, uh, and so. Uh, I think it, I I do think that it would be good to test older older versions as well, like uh, for the ones that we support. Yeah, the, so right now we the can say think is is which which versions because uh, essentially in this particular in this particular case uh, because it's a CV, I'm pretty much sure that everyone backported. So there was a question on the chat uh, why why AWS broke. Uh, I mean, even if they're using 1.3, uh, 1.13.7. Uh, but I guess that they just backported this specific part because it's a CVE. I mean, the moment that it's disclosed, <laughs> uh, you should be patched, <laughs> especially when you're a public cloud, right? I mean, um, yeah, it's backported to AWS, but not to Google. <laughs> oh, uh, wow, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. People get... <laughs> <laughs> Get on Google. You have some free resources there. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, especially with the public clouds, it's um, it's a bit um, it's a bit tricky. Also, 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 given the fact that, that that they also are providing a couple of versions from what I know, like you have one twelve and one one thirteen uh, in uh, in Asia, no, in, Asia, in AWS, right? you are able to switch back and forth between two different versions i mean if we have to be to be to be checking all the versions that are out there and that we claim we support or we should just figure out a subset and say we support this 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 and this i mean it's usually really a matter of just small api modifications in this case yeah there was a security fix which i don't Okay, I hope that there won't be much of this in the future, <laughs> like you know, every week or every month. Uh, uh, I guess that that is mostly about just bumping the the, the, the API to the next version and uh, changing things here and there, like I'm trying to deal now with the webhook, which apparently changed quite <laughs> uh, from the, the the last time that we we used our client Go code. But okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, yeah. De definitely. If if we have a PR and measure and see that it doesn't really hurt um, our CI in terms of timing, then okay, why not? Let's let's do it. Yeah, I think something we can do in the meantime is like right now we it's better to keep it simple because we have limited resources. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's the, my recommendation. <coughs> Would be keep it simple uh, with the CI is doing what it needs to do. So the uh, the fact that it broke on one on one fifteen two is uh, is excellent that we caught that. Um, yeah. And uh, eventually, when when we're shipping our our first stable release, uh, we can work out and say, hey, this thing runs on this version of Kubernetes as its primary. Uh, we've also tested it on on these versions of these clouds, and so we we just we just say what our CI tested on in the beginning, and then what we can do is 
in the long run as we get more resources. Uh, best case scenario would be to get like someone in Google to help maintain uh, testing with the Google Cloud and someone from from AWS to help uh, support and test uh, AWS one. So that, that would be the best case scenario. But barring that, you know, we can say these are the versions that we tested against. And when a CVE comes out, uh, we can we can make sure that it continues to to work with uh, the versions that we've explicitly have, uh, have stated. And the clouds will have to play it by by ear because we may not have the choice of moving up to a dot release. They may they may force people to move up to a to a higher one uh, in depending on their up, on their upgrade strategy. But uh, for now, my my recommendation is keep it simple <coughs> um, and we we fixed the uh, we fixed the problem and i think temporarily while people uh, i think doing a pinning to an older version on main on the master i think would be okay it's just uh but it's just so we can unblock people who are actively actively testing in the sim for the first uh, for the first time until we until we have uh, that first stable release and then from then on we'll always point people to the to the stable release so, okay. Um, cool. And with that, I, I don't have anything else to to bring up. I just want to make sure the community was aware of what was going on. In, in yeah, that space. we are. Uh, do you do yeah, you have anything it's, else? It's it's a it's a really good 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 occasion. I guess I am. Well, sorry, hello? sorry you. You, you cut out. What was that? Um, I was I was just uh, saying that um, it's actually a good good occasion to actually probably sit down and think a little bit more about how are we handling uh, all these different versions. Because okay, testing is is one thing; it's fine. But then our client client code, for example, is somehow stuck to one point fourteen for reasons and we're not really able to move forward at least not that easy uh, and then um i'm not sure what other projects are doing are they following just the latest release branch because essentially we have three versions released 113 114 and 115 in terms of kubernetes and are we tracking all of these do we need to build against different clients are they backward compatible forward compatible even I know that some of the APIs are, but uh, I'm not really sure how. what is the proper way of being able to support all of these versions. Yeah, let's, I mean, uh, yeah. Let's, 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 start, uh, let's, let's start doing a little bit of, uh, of research on it and we can add it to the uh, specs board and say, these are the upgrade, these are the version strategies that each of the cloud runs. The version strategy that Kubernetes uses, and uh, that way we can have all the information in one place. Because I'm, to me, it's not clear what what these companies uh, are are doing, but I know that they do something that's predictable, or assuming I assume they do something predictable, and so that'll give us the ability to uh, to work out in the long run how we want to do versioning as well, and what we want to peg against. Yeah, you know, just just so we can have that initial information. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, we definitely can and probably should handle this through a spec and just try to gather the information and uh, do a little bit of brainstorming on how to go forward. Yeah, but yeah, because yeah. there's there's no way we can make a decision without that information. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Is there uh, any other topics that we want to bring up? Uh, I invite the community as well. If there's any topics anyone wants to ask. Cool. Well, with that, I want to thank everyone for your time and make sure you start thinking about your NSMCon proposals, which will be the day before KubeCon or the 18th, I believe. And uh, with that, everyone have a fantastic day. And we will see you next week at the same time. Take care.
Thank you. 